best deal going. Good afternoon, everyone, from Cleveland Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, where today the Red Sox and Indians will meet in a doubleheader. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Bob Montgomery. It's nice to have you with us for the second doubleheader in as many days for these two teams. It wasn't scheduled to be one yesterday, but it turned out to be as the Red Sox went 19 innings in picking up their first win of the season when Tim Nearing hit a home run in the 19th to make it 7-5 to five Boston. Eight pitchers used by the Red Sox yesterday, including Mike Gardner, who was supposed to start game one of this doubleheader. Roger Clemens to the rescue. Well, Roger supposedly sometime during that game picked up the phone, called the Red Sox clubhouse, and sent the message to Bush. If you want me to, I'm okay to pitch, according to Dr. Pappas. I'll jump on an airplane in the morning, and I'll be over there to pitch one of those two games for you tomorrow afternoon in Cleveland. Well, he's going to do that. He's on his way right now. He should be in the ballpark in more than enough time to work in the second game. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. Both managers, both pitching coaches are really going to be put to the test this afternoon. Roger will start game two. Matt Young makes his first start of the season in game one. What kind of a bullpen do Rich Gale and Butch Hobson have available? I think Danny Darwin definitely can be marked off your list. I think uh, Eric Bell probably can be marked off the list for the Cleveland Indians. There is a question mark about Jeff Reardon. If he doesn't have to work in the first game, he may be available to get an out or two in the second ball game. And I think that's about the only guys he could really point a finger at on both ball clubs that would not be available. But with two games working, and you have to think how nice it is now for both managers making a decision that they left their respective spring training areas with 11-man pitching staffs. Maybe that wasn't enough. <laughs> Charles Nagy and Scott Scudder, the starters today for Cleveland. We'll have the starting lineups for game one right after this. Today's Red Sox starting lineup is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers, where quality dealers deliver low prices every day. For the Red Sox this afternoon, Wade Boggs leads off at third base. Jody Reed at second base. Mike Greenwell in left field. Ellis Burks batting cleanup in center field. Phil Plantier, the right fielder. Batting sixth, the DH, Jack Clark. Mo Vaughn at first base. Luis Rivera, the shortstop. And John Flaherty makes his major league debut behind the plate. It will be Matt Young on the mound for the Red Sox. The umpires, crew chief Rich Garcia calls the balls and strikes. Dan Morrison at first, Tim Welke at second, and Dale Scott after 19 innings behind the plate with the equipment on yesterday calling the balls and strikes as what he hopes will be a leisurely day at third. They usually call that the rocking chair position for the umpiring crew, and I'll tell you, he probably needs one That's right. after those 19 innings today. So does this guy here. <laughs> Butch Hobson. Believe me, Butch, all those wins won't come as easily as yesterday's. <laughs> he uh, had to go 19 innings for his first win as a major league manager, but it was well worth the wait. And as you can see by the smile on his face, he seemed much more relaxed now that the monkey is off his back before the game today. The Indians, meanwhile, trying to score some runs. Neither one of these two teams has had much success to this point offensively. The Red Sox, in going one and two to this point, have hit 213 as a team. The Indians have hit 199, and they've only scored nine runs in four games. And the Indians are one and three. The Indians on the field, and Rocco Scotty will sing our national anthem. In the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see for the dawn's early light what's so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the run parts we watched were so gallantly streaming of the rocket rider the bomb bursting in air came through that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land And the 
Scotty, Cleveland native, with the national anthem. Well done. As you might be able to tell by the pictures, it is a good deal cooler than it was yesterday when it was 73 degrees at game time for the Indians home opener. At the moment, it is 41 degrees on the shores of Lake Erie. And making his second start of the season is Fairfield, Connecticut native Charles Nagy. Nagy wasn't particularly supported well by his teammates last year as far as offense was concerned, Sean, and that's already started this way for him. This young man opening the season for the Cleveland Indians in Baltimore, worked a very nifty eight innings against the Orioles, gave up just two earned runs. That was enough. He took the loss two to nothing as he was shut out once again. So this young man knows what it's like to have to get one or two runs and really nail him. This guy's a pretty good pitcher, good live arm, good fastball, and good slider. Defensively for the Cleveland Indians this afternoon, Albert Bell is in left field. Speedster Kenny Lofton is in center. Mark Whitten, strong throwing arm, is in right field. Around their infield, Brooks Jacoby at third. Mark Lewis at shortstop. Carlos Baierga is at second base. Massachusetts native Paul Sorrento is at first base. And Junior Ortiz is the catcher. A little bit of a Minnesota Twins mm -hmm. flavor to this Cleveland ball club this year with Sorrento and Ortiz being added. Yesterday's 19-inning marathon was the longest game in Indians history at 6 hours and 30 minutes. It was just two frames shy of being the longest Indians game in terms of innings. And we'll have at least 18 innings here today with the Red Sox and Indians playing a scheduled doubleheader. We've got a good shot at getting two games done here in less time than they took to play one yesterday. Oh, let's knock on wood before we say that. <laughs> I would, but my hands are too cold. Wade Box leads off. He's hitting 235 with one run batted in. Wade's been to the plate 17 times with four hits, three singles, and a double. Nagy's first pitch, the ball high, and we're underway. Strong breeze swirling around this bowl-shaped stadium. That could be a problem for the fielders today. And it will definitely affect balls hit in the air. The moment it's blowing in, take our word for it. You may see some circus-type catches made in this ballpark today because of that swirling wind. Come in here, hook around. In the corner, two balls and a strike on Boggs. Reed and Greenwell to follow in the top of the first. Hold to second base and Carlos Bayerga. One out. bring up Jody Reed who had his first home run of the season yesterday he was two for eight he also walked once in the 19 inning ball game ball one Jody said before the game it's a good thing I went deep yesterday because this is not my kind of day he could hit three home runs yesterday really mm -hmm. and go Albert Bell up next to the wall two other times in the ball game. Every time he was at the bat yesterday, he hit the ball right on the nose. That's pulled foul. Pretty good crowd here today. They had just under 66,000 here yesterday. It was the largest opening day crowd in baseball this season. Today is kids opening day and a lot of youngsters in attendance. Breaking ball misses. Two balls and one strike. Under the heater. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jody before the game doing his best to stay warm. <laughs> That's down to third. Jacoby made a nice play on a tricky hop to throw off the mark, but Sorrento tagged him up. Two outs to the Red Sox first. Folks, this is a classy play here. An experienced man making this play. 
Looked like uh, at the last second, Bad Hop was going to wind up in left field, but Brooke Jacoby stays right with it and makes a very nice play on Jody Reed. Oops, there it is. Usually you think of third baseman main making reaction plays because of speed on the ball, not on hops taken like that one. Now Mike Greenwell. Ball one low. Greenwell two for 15 to this point this year. Still looking for his first homer and first RBI. Mike was one for seven with a walk in yesterday's game. The ball outside, 2-0. Oh. A lot of defense was thrown around in that ball game. Yes, a lot of good plays turned in by both teams. It's a game that really features just about everything that a game can feature. <laughs> when you play that long, you got a chance of you, feature. Yes, you're making you all your features, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Ball four, Greenwell walks on four pitches to become the game's first base runner. We have been informed that Roger Clemens has arrived here at Cleveland Stadium. He was scheduled to land at the Cleveland Airport at 11.35 this morning. And he is here. He'll start game two this afternoon against the Indian Scott Scudder. Ellis Burks hitting 214 with one RBI. Right over the outside corner. Ellis 0 for 6 yesterday. He walked twice. Red Sox still looking for their first stolen base of the year. They've been caught twice as a team. That's called back into the upper deck. And Burks is in the hole 0 and 2. Ellis likes to hit in this park. He has nine home runs at Cleveland Stadium, which is his highest total in any visiting ball yard. And it's 14 home runs in all against Cleveland, his high against any American League opponent. You should also mention, since you're on the subject of home runs, this ballpark a great deal smaller mm -hmm. in this championship season than it was last year. They've moved the fences in 20 feet from where they were a year ago. Check swing and a ball low. They appealed down to Dan Morrison who said it was not a swing. Last year they had the great wall of Cleveland. Not only was it 20 feet further from home plate, but it was also higher than it is. They thought they'd build their team around the speed of Alex Cole out in center field. After a miserable year last year, they abandoned that idea and moved the fences back in. No score. We're in the top of the first. Greenwell is running. Burks, a bounding ball just foul past the third base bag. Don Zimmer in the third base coach's box today. A little bit ahead of schedule. He was aiming for the home opener. He's out there this afternoon. Well, stiffer this afternoon. He had to make a lot of trips up and down those steps to get out to those coaching lines yesterday. He said about the 14th, I was quickly reminded I had surgery not too long ago. Maggie looks Greenwell back to first. Well, not running that time as Burks fouled it straight back. Difficulty getting one foot in front of the other going back into the bag, and that made it a close play. A little stutter step. He 
Burns not running. And Burke strikes out. Foul tip into the mid of Ortiz. First strikeout of the day for Charles Nagy. After half an inning in Cleveland, the Red Sox nothing and the Indians coming up. The Cleveland Indians lineup this afternoon. Kenny Lofton leads off in center field. Glenn Allen Hill in left field. Carlos Bayerga, the second baseman. Albert Bell, the DH and cleanup hitter. Mark Witten in right field. Peabody native Paul Sorrento at first base. Brooke Jacoby, the third baseman, batting seventh. Junior Ortiz is the catcher in game one. And the shortstop, Mark Lewis, hits ninth. That is the lineup against Matt Young making his first start of the season. Coach Hobson certainly hopes that he can bring his spring training efforts right into the start of this season. And for more than anything else, he needs some innings out of this left hand today because of what happened yesterday and the depletion of somewhat of a solid bullpen. Matt last year, three and seven in 19 games for the Red Sox, spending quite a bit of time on the disabled list. For the Red Sox defensively this afternoon, Greenwell, Burks, and Plantier left to right in the outfield. Boggs at third, Rivera at short, Reed at second, Vaughn at first, and Flaherty making his major league debut. The Red Sox have yet to commit an error in this 1992 season. And Kenny Lofton, the first hitter against Matt Young in 1992. Ball one. Lofton hitting 200 with one RBI. Ball two, low and away. Lofton was two for seven in yesterday's 19 inning ball game. He scored two runs and at his first American League RBI. Three and all. Oh. Al Bumbry trying to stay warm. Ball four. Well, a rather ominous start to the season for Matt Young, who was by control problems throughout 1991 and really throughout much of his major league career. And Lofton can fly. He's at first for Glenn Allen Hill hitting 200 with one run batted in. And one RBI came yesterday. Five straight balls from Matt Young, 1-0 and on Hill. It was two for eight in yesterday's game. Two and oh, and six straight balls. And John Flaherty out to the mound. Young pitched 21 innings in spring training and only walked seven while striking out 12. Monty mentioned his impressive spring numbers, a 3-0 record, finished the spring with 10 consecutive scoreless innings. And a strike. Really no reason for Lofton to consider running until Matt did throw a strike. No, you're absolutely right. But he might be thinking about it now. Matt Young thought so. This young man scored a lot of bases last year. Most of them at the AAA level. 40 for the Tucson ball club. Before he was brought up to the Houston club during the end of the season. He is running. It's a strike. Flaherty's throw. Not in time. Stolen base for Kenny Lofton. Flaherty with his first shot at throwing out a big league runner. Makes a pretty good throw out of it. Gets rid of it quickly. He's right on line, but not much he could do about getting Lofton with that high throw. The first American League stolen base for Kenny Lofton. He's at second with nobody out. We're in the bottom of the first. No score. And the count is full on Glen Allen Hill. 
Lofton taking off for third. It's a strikeout, and he's safe. He stole that off Young. Lofton got a great jump away from second base. Flaherty had no chance to get him. Lofton taking a little page out of Ricky Henderson's book here. Third is oftentimes considered the easiest of bases to steal. So second pitch after he stole second, he's off to the races, and you can see by how far he is safe. Hill struck out first strikeout of the season for Matt Young a runner at third the infield back Rivera as you saw well back on the edge of the outfield grass with Carlos Bayerga at the plate straight back for strike one Bayerga went into yesterday's game 0 for 12 for the season yesterday he went six for nine Career high, as you might expect, six hits in a game for Bayerga. And the most by an Indians player in a game, George Orta, in June of 1980. Bayerga tied the team record for hits in a game with those six yesterday. The one strike pitch. Bounced foul. And Young is ahead of Bayerga 0 2 with Albert Bell on deck. A couple of Red Sox players have already had a great deal of building of confidence. Mo Vaughn being the biggest one. The whole spring, Hobson and his staff has worked on building up the confidence of a Matt Young. If he gets out of the situation here with not giving up a run, boy, what a confidence builder that can be. Foul ball, apparently. It was tough to tell if it hit by Erga or the bat. Richie Garcia saying it was a foul ball and still a count of 0 and 2. Fiega comes charging out of there and oops. Right off the end of the bat. I think it maybe hits the bat first and then runs down into his arm, does it? I do not know. I don't know. I never saw the ball on that one. Did it? it disappeared. Was there a pitch? <laughs> Another row two. Breaking ball fouled away by Erga. Hanging in there at no balls and two strikes. Erga made a lot of difference to this Indian ball club last year. Not only offensively, of course, a switch hitter, but he helped them quite a bit when he moved finally over from third over to second. They became a much better ball club in the infield. Turned more double plays. Made fewer errors. High and away. Good stab by Flaherty. One and two on Bayerga. Carlos has been around a couple of years now, but he's still just 23 years old. And he continues to improve at second base, working with a new member of the Indians coaching staff, Ron Clark, in spring training. To short. That'll get the run in. Rivera's low throw could not be handled by Vaughn. Lofton scored. It's 1-0 Cleveland, and Bayerga is aboard on what will undoubtedly be an error charged to Luis Rivera, the first Red Sox error of the year. We might blame a little bit of this on cold hands on a day like today. However, there seems to be a great deal of that nonchalant look once again from Lua Rivera on this play. Red Sox are playing back. They're going to give the Indians the run. Rivera coming on, seems to have the grip on it, then just throws low. Mo Vaughn can't dig it out. Bayerga safe and a run in. Credit by Edgar with a RBI regardless mm -hmm. of whether it's an error or not because of where the Red Sox infield was set defensively. Louis led all American League shortstops last year in errors with 24. That's his first this season and the first committed by the Red Sox. Albert Bell the hitter one strike the count. One nothing Indians were in the bottom of the first. Ball just low. Bell off to a slow start. Two for 16 with one RBI. His first two hits of the season came in yesterday's game. He started out 0 for 9 in the series in Baltimore. Routine fly to right. Lantier the catch, two outs. And Bayerga back to first. Oh, 
goal yet, partner? Whoa. I don't know if the friends at home can hear that wind whistling through our microphones, but we hear it. <laughs> and feel it. It sounds cold, and it is cold. Mark Witten looked at a strike. He's two for 18 to this point. Good breaking ball. Young quickly ahead of Mark Witten. No balls and two strikes. Bayerga at first with two outs. Well hit toward the gap in right center. Plantier on the run, and he makes the catch. Terrific backhanded catch by Phil Plantier after a long run into the gap. The Indians get one. And after one, they lead one to nothing. Under fans, that every time a Red Sox player hits a home run during a TV 38 televised game, you can win two tickets to a Red Sox home game in a case of two liter bottles of Pepsi. To enter, send your postcard to TV 38 Pepsi Home Run Sweepstakes, Post Office Box 500, Boston, Massachusetts, 02135. Bill Plantier set to lead off as we go to the second. It's 1 0 Cleveland, and only 1 0 because of the nice catch by Plantier for the final out of the Indian first. Phil hitting 111. One homer and one RBI. Those coming on his first at bat of the season against Scott Sanderson Tuesday at Yankee Stadium. One ball and one strike. Charles Nagy will face Jack Clark and Mo Vaughn following Plantier. Big swing and a miss. Bill did not start yesterday's game, came in as a pinch hitter, then went into right field, wound up coming to the plate three times. He went 0 for 3 and was hit by a pitch. And he's out on strikes. Second strikeout for Charles Nagy, and they've come back to back. He's Van Burks to win the first inning. Good tailing fastball, not only tailing, but sinking to go along with it. That ball looks so inviting to the left hand hitters. They're primarily low ball hitters anyway. They see it down in that zone, they go looking for it. And by the time they get into the contact area, the bottom has fallen out of it, and Nagy has a second strikeout. Working now to Jack Clark. Jack at 077. No homers, no runs batted in. He's one for 13. And ahead here, two balls and no strikes. And one hit came yesterday, a single. He also walked and scored a run. One nothing Cleveland. We're in the top of the second. It's a day with pitchers who have those running type fastballs. And, and Matt Young would have that. They are trying to keep it in on hitters' hands, and hitters are looking for something from the middle of the plate away from them. Keep it off their hands. Three and one now. Bounce foul. Into the photographer area beyond the Red Sox dugout. Full count. <laughs> and Jack stays alive at three and two. Charles Nagy is 6'3", 200 pounds. We mentioned a native of Fairfield, Connecticut. 1985 graduate of Roger Ludlow High School in Fairfield. He went on to the University of Connecticut and majored in economics, pitched two years for the Huskies. 
and was a two time Big East pitcher of the year. And he strikes out Jack Clark. Three straight strikeouts for Nagy. Nagy fanned 109 last year in his first year in the major leagues. Mark has now struck out seven times this season. This is his fourth game. Mo Vaughn hit his second home run of the season in yesterday's game. A screaming line drive. Never got much more than about 10 feet off the ground. Mo hitting 333. Which Hobson said before the game, Tom Brunanski likely to see action at first base in game two. Scott Cooper and Herm Winningham likely to start in game two. Cooper at third, Winningham in center. I have to remind our viewers too, Sean, that between games today, I'll be talking with Butch Hobson. Actually, I've already talked to him. And also Phil Plantier mm -hmm. comes along for a little chat. Mo tried to check his swing and could not. They field down to third, and Dale Scott said correctly that it was a strike. Two and two. I was talking to Butch this morning during that interview. Watch him beam when he talks about Clemens giving him the phone call and really coming to his rescue today. Breaking ball just missed. Nagy's bidding for his fourth straight strikeout, and it's a full count on Vaughn. Two outs, bases empty. Yes, without Roger making himself available, the Red Sox really would have been in a bind. With Mike Gardner working three innings to get the win in yesterday's game. Check swing. This time, no swing. And the Red Sox have a two-out base runner in the second. Second walk issued by Nagy. Well, that has to say a little something about the respect that Nagy has for Mo Vaughn. Had him three and one. Breaking ball to get the strike and then three and two right back with the breaking ball once again. After demonstrating a pretty good tailing fastball, that says to me that they fear the chance of Mo Vaughn catching up with the fastball. Luis Rivera, the hitter. That's chopped foul. Louis, four for six at the plate to this point this season. He and Tim Nairing have pretty well been. Dividing time at shortstop, and Butch Hobson said before the game he sees no reason why that situation cannot continue. Both Louie and Tim seem satisfied with the arrangement. It might be helpful to have them push each other. Although, as Butch says, when you're a professional athlete, you shouldn't need that sort of motivation. You should be out there doing as well as you can at all times. The only drawback I can see to that is it's tough playing looking over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. You are in the lineup for a day or two, and you sometimes have a sense of pressure being put on by not performing well. If I do for the day, uh, you always have that little thing, am I playing tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Am I playing tomorrow? The competition is there, and it should be there. More than likely, it will be a plus. Mm. Good breaking ball straight in the back of Rivera. One and two to come. It's unlikely that that situation will continue throughout the season, but at the moment, neither is clearly better than the others. They've both been playing very well in this young season to this point. Struck him out. Nagy struck out the side with the walk to Vaughn mixed in. Four strikeouts in two innings for Charles Nagy. And after an inning and a half, it's the Indians one and the Red Sox nothing. Fans, every time the Red Sox complete a double play, you have a chance to win a pair of Red Sox tickets, compliments of Thompson's Wood Protector. To be eligible, send a postcard to Thompson's Double Play, Box 3800, Boston, 02135. Matt Young to Paul Sorrento as we go to the home half of the second. With Cleveland leading one to nothing. Ball one on Sorrento. What a great day in the field yesterday at first base. He's hitting 235 in his first season with the Indians. Slowly down to first. Mo Vaughn plays it himself. One out. We'll remind you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Boston Red Sox and TV 38. It's intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication 
reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Red Sox. And TV 38 is prohibited. Now Brooke Jacoby. Hitting 200. Line Devon. The one on the ground to mow. Now one in the air and two quick outs. Here in the bottom of the second. Oh, Matt Young throws strikes, and we've talked about this many times. When he throws strikes, he gets anybody's lineup out. It's just that simple. Get him ahead in the count. He can put pressure on hitters all the way around. This time, a little defensive set just right for Mo Vaughn on Brooks Jacoby. Now Junior Ortiz fouling one off his leg. This is his first at bat of the season. Monty mentioned he's a former Minnesota twin. The Indians had the need for a backup catcher behind Sandy Alomar when Joel Skinner had offseason shoulder surgery. He's not expected back until early May. Rivera on the money. The Indians go down one, two, three very quickly in the second. We've played two in game one of this doubleheader. The Indians lead one to nothing. It's time for our Around the Horn report, brought to you by your New England Toyota dealer for Toyota value. It really is the best deal going. Oakland's Ricky Henderson stole second and third base in the first inning of Friday night's game. He now is three shy of 1,000 career stolen bases with 997. And on the subject of stolen bases, Chicago's Tim Raines swiped the 689th of his career, tying Hall of Famer Joe Morgan for eight on Major League Baseball's all-time stolen base list. And the Detroit Tigers, who are off to an 0 and 5 start, have been out, have been without Rob Deere for the last three games with a sore neck in his status is day to day. That's around the horn brought to you by your New England Toyota dealer. Tigers 0 and 5 and all of those games at home. Meanwhile, Mike Hargrove is beginning his first full season as manager of the Indians. And he's on a one-year contract, so this is an important year for him. He took over last July 6th when John McNamara were fired. And here's the first major league at bat for John Flaherty, the 24-year-old catcher. He begins the third with the Red Sox trailing one to nothing. Flaherty, then Boggs and Reed. foul tip for strike one. Tony Pena caught all 19 innings of yesterday's game. Butch Hobson said he was concerned as the game went along about the wear and tear on Tony and checked with him after every inning. But as you might expect, Tony said he was fine and did not want to come up. And Al Alomar caught all 19 innings for Cleveland. And they still seem to have a lot of spring in their legs in the 19th inning, both catchers. Down the line, off the bag, a fair ball. And a base hit for John Flaherty in his first major league at bat. He'll have a double. And undoubtedly they'll get the ball for him. Oh, nice going John Flaherty. He has impressed us behind the plate with his work down in spring training and his double being applauded by his teammates as they'll shout out of that third base dugout right down the line grabs the bag bounces over the glove of the diving Jacoby toward the Red Sox bullpen in left field. Kobe almost took that one in the head. But John Flaherty with the Red Sox first hit in the first of his career and his first at bat. And Wade Boggs looks for the ball. Wade started the ball game by bouncing out to the second baseman by Yerga. That is the first hit of the game for either team. The Indians scored their run without a hit in the first inning. And loft and walked to start the inning. Stole second and third and scored on Bayerga's ground ball. Tricky hop, but Bayerga stayed with it. Boggs advances Flaherty to third. One out. Now Jody Reed, who bounced to third his first time up. It's retired on a nice play by Jacoby, who stayed with 
A bouncing ball that took a tricky hop. This field is not in very good shape. The outfield much worse than the infield. They're soft, still strong signs of football playing mm -hmm. in the stadium. The infield in for the Indians here in the third inning. And Jody had to back out of the way of the pitch high and tight. Reed and plate umpire Rich Garcia not too much in uh, with we know Reed's not in favor of this kind of weather. Rich Garcia doesn't live that far from Jody Reed. Rich lives makes his home over in Clearwater Florida a couple of miles away from Jody and Boggs who both make their home just north of Tampa. Jody way up in the front of the batter's box for Nagy and the count is two and oh. Any surprise that the infield is in in this situation? Not as few runs as the Cleveland Indians score mm -hmm. and have been scoring. No, you had another spot in the lineup, maybe uh, deeper in the thick part of the order. Probably would see them back with Jody up there. They'll take a chance. Two and all the count. And Nagy in with a strike. The Indians lead one to nothing. The Red Sox batting in the third against Charles Nagy. Was a member of the 1988 United States Olympic baseball team in Seoul. Nagy, Nagy may have pulled the infield in himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, guys, let's see if we can cut this off. I'm kind of lead. The 2-1, two, 2-2. Two two. Well, one thing that's been a strong suit for Nagy this afternoon has been the strikeout, and certainly he has to have his mind set there now that he's back even in the count with Reed. Four strikeouts already. Mm, and there's that good movement on that fastball once again. Jody was made very aware of the pitch inside on him. The very first pitch. Now what that does that gives Nagy a lot of that outside edge of the plate. Notice somewhat of a defensive kind of swing there from Jody. The hitter wants to protect all of the plate in this situation. Ball three. The count is full. Three balls, two strikes, one out. John Flaherty, the runner at third. We're in the top of the third with Cleveland leading one to nothing. Three-two pitch, got him. Breaking ball, outside corner. Five strikeouts in two and two-thirds innings for Charles Nagy. Nagy had two strikeouts in his opening day start over in Baltimore, so now he's racked up a total of seven with five coming in the very, very early goings of this one. Ooh, what a timely one. Now the infield can back up. With two outs and Mike Greenwell. At the plate looking for his first RBI of the season. Fastball for strike one. Greenwell walked in the first. the end of the bat and it's quickly 0 and 2. Nagy using three pitches and pretty much getting them all over the plate now. Not all over the plate in the strike zone mm -hmm. I should say because he's not all over the plate. Fastball curve and an off speed pitch. And he strikes out Greenwell who is completely fooled. The Red Sox cannot take advantage of the leadoff double by Flaherty. Six strikeouts in three innings for Charles Nagy. After two and a half in game one of this doubleheader, the Indians won the Red Sox nothing. Kids, the Red Sox and Shambit Bank have a perfect way for you to save money. Be one of the first 15,000 fans, age 15 and younger, to enter Fenway Park on Saturday, April 25th, when the Sox play the Texas Rangers and receive a Red Sox Helmet Bank compliments of Shamit Bank. For ticket information, call 617-267-8661. Tickets subject to availability. Oh, isn't that nice? From Quincy, the city of presidents. 
a great city. Mark Lewis, the leadoff hitter, as we go to the bottom of the third. He's hitting 294, one homer, one RBI. And then the top of the order, Lofton and Hill. The Indians lead one to nothing. They scored in the bottom of the first, but Lofton walked on four pitches to start the game. Stole second and third, and scored on a ground ball to short by Carlos Bayerga. Young is not allowed a hit. And he has fallen behind Lewis. 3 and 0. Oh. And ball 4. So for the second time in 3 innings, the Indians get a leadoff walk in the first inning. It resulted in the only run of the game. Dave Nelson is the first base coach, a new member of the Indian staff. Former Major League second baseman, including a couple of seasons with the Cleveland Indians. Former Red Sox catcher Jeff Newman is the Indians' third base coach. Kenny Lofton, the hitter. Five straight balls from Young. Lofton walked and scored the run in the first. Now Rich Garcia is approaching the mound. That's all about. I haven't noticed Young gesturing or saying anything into Garcia after the ball call. Two and all the count. That's exactly how the first inning started. Lewis at first, nobody out in the third, one nothing Cleveland. Young has thrown seven straight balls to start the inning. Lofton played basketball at the University of Arizona. He was the sixth man on their 1988 team that reached the final four of the NCAA tournament. He looks at a strike. And he was the starting point guard in 1989 on a team that was ranked number one in the country during the regular season. He set the Wildcats record for steals in a season and a career. Lewis running, it's ball four. Back-to-back -back walks to start the inning. First and second and nobody out. And that will bring Red Sox pitching coach Rich Gale to the mound. Not much grass along that path. After all the trips Gale and Butch Hobson made to the mound yesterday, eight pitchers used by the Red Sox in yesterday's 19 inning game, seven by the Indians. Now one of the most impressive aspects of yesterday's game was the performance of Mike Gardner, who was throwing as hard as he ever has, harder than he ever has in his Red Sox career. Start of that game off yesterday, kind of cool, breathing it, knowing full well that his start was coming today, and no reason for him to get too excited or concerned about pitching in that game. All of a sudden, he winds up with three excellent innings and a win. He was keeping the chart when the game started. Perfect double play ball to short. The throw off the mark, safe. Vaughn could not get the tag on Glen Allen Hill. Now, this is where the speed of Lofton really helps the Indians here. He's able to get in on top of Reed just enough to have, look like the ball may have glanced off of Lofton. No, it just, Jody was taken out of the play enough. He couldn't get the throw right on line, and Mo Vaughn couldn't make the tag. Boy, that's what you call some bad hitting there. Here's two guys who walk leading an inning off and your third batter up swings at the first pitch mm -hmm. and they got away with it because they stayed out of the double play but that doesn't say a lot for a guy who is not doing an, a great deal of thinking watching from that on deck circle 
Carlos Bayerga the hitter. He swings with the first pitch. Sends it straight back. Nice catch made by a fan in the upper deck. Bayerga picked up an RBI with his ground ball to short that brought Lofton in from third in the first inning. Carlos reached on a throwing error by Luis Rivera. The inability to turn the double play looms large instead of a runner at third and two outs. It's first and third, just one out. Red Sox infield again at double play depth. Hill takes off the pitcher ball. Flaherty throws down, safe. Second stolen base of the season for Glenn Allen Hill. And the third of the game for the Indians. Indians and Mike Hargrove wanting to take any chances they can to get stay away from the double play. And boy, Clarity once again with a good quick release. Good move by Hill over there. Had a good jump, then he gets the stolen base. Good effort by Reed, too. Good quick snapping tag. Sometimes that'll get you the call. Not this time. The infield now in with second and third the situation. Zayerga swing and a miss. Helped Young along by chasing the ball at his feet. One and two the count. One nothing Indians. They're batting in the third. Mark Lewis is the runner at third. And Glenn Allen Hill at second. Albert Bell is on deck. Great block by Flaherty on a breaking ball in the dirt. Panic's very solid. Throws that all spring training long, not only in throwing, but in handling pitchers and blocking balls, keeping them in front of him. The 2 2 pitch up the middle, Rivera. Tries third, safe. And the Indians lead two to nothing. As Bayerga picks up his second RBI of the game. Nice play by Rivera to flag this ball down. He'll look at home first, then he sees the runner going to third. Doesn't get anybody there. Once you don't get the guy at home, you usually are thinking in terms of making sure that I get the one out. Hill is safe as contact was on by the Indians. That means that with a ball hit on the ground, the guy from third is going. He's going to force the play. That gives the guy at second that much bigger jump. The fielder's choice in an RBI for Bayerga, so the Indians lead two to nothing, despite the fact that they still do not have a hit. And the batter is Albert Bell. Infield back at double play depth with first and third and one out. Bell fly to right his first time up. One and one. <laughs> Bell checked his swing. It's two and one. Two walks in the inning. Lewis, who drew the leadoff walk, scored. Ball three, high and away. Let's pause now for station identification. This is the TV 38 Red Sox Network. This is TV 38, WSBK TV, Boston. John McDonough with Bob Montgomery, our producer director John Wilson. Happy to have you with us on this chilly day in Cleveland. Red Sox trailing two to nothing. Bell swung and missed the three-one pitch. I 
Ortega does not run with a 3-2 pitch, and Bell strikes out. Second strikeout of the game for Matt Young. There is action in the Red Sox bullpen. Peter Hoy is throwing. He made his major league debut yesterday, worked one inning. Two outs, runners at first and third. One run in here in the third, and the Indians lead two to nothing. A two shot off the end of the bat of Mark Witten. He's thrown out by Reed, and that ends the inning. Again, the leadoff walk hurts Matt Young. And after three, it's two nothing, Cleveland. Tickets are on sale right now. They're available at the Red Sox ticket office at Fenway Park, the Boston Red Sox Clubhouse Shop at Burlington Mall, or by calling 617-267-1700. Get ready. This is the year of the Red Hot Red Sox. They're not red hot today. I don't care how hot they're not red hot today. For those of you just joining us, 41 degrees the game time temperature. 32 degrees colder than it was at game time yesterday. Ellis Burks struck out back in the first. Charles Nagy has struck out six Red Sox hitters through three innings. He's only allowed one hit. That was the double last inning by John Flaherty. And he has walked two. Red Sox have not hit a ball in the air against Nagy. Flaherty's double was a ground ball over the third base bag. Other than that, six strikeouts and three ground outs. And a count of 0 and 2 on Burks, Plantier to follow, and then Jack Clark in the fourth. Game one of a doubleheader. Roger Clemens and Scott Scudder will lock horns in game two. The ball. Charles Nagy will go into the trivia book. He started the first ever game. It's Oriole Park at Camden Yards on April 6th. Cost a complete game, but lost 2 0 to Rick Sutcliffe. Lewis charging, but could not make the play. And Ellis Burks has an infield hit. The second Boston hit. Swinging bunt by Ellis Burks. It's quite soft here in front of the plate. There you see it looked like a grenade exploding as it goes off. A little bit of a Detroit look. <laughs> Mark Lewis just cannot do a thing in the world about it. Goes back to the pitcher and hope he'll get you another ground ball and maybe a two, two spot turned over. Bill Plantier, the hitter. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Bill struck out swinging his first time up. Burks back safely. Well, we noticed that when Nagy has base runners, the Indians have him throwing more over to first. The stolen base rate against Nagy last year was astronomical. Something like 77%. In 30 attempts, 23 runners were successful. That's what a pretty good throwing catcher. For, for some while, Alomar, of course, was hurt. Joel Skinner also a mm -hmm. pretty good throwing catcher, so you have to blame most of that on Nagy's lack of attention to base runners and his somewhat of a long delivery to the plate. He is ahead of Plantier. One ball and two strikes. Burks at first with nobody out in the four. Two nothing Indian. Ellis draws a throw. What did help Nagy last year when runners got on base was that the opposing batters grounded into 22 double plays while he was on the mound. That was fifth in the American League. I mentioned the opening day start in Baltimore. Nagy had a tough time getting into the park to make that start. Like many starting pitchers, he arrived at the ballpark later than his teammates did not go over on the team bus walked over from the hotel which was just a short distance away and when he got to the gate they wouldn't let him in Burks running Plantier strikes out and Burks has the Red Sox first stolen base of the season Six.
seven strikeouts now for Charles Nagy. Notice the long delivery of Nagy there, and it's on a breaking ball. Not much of a chance for Junior Ortiz to throw Burks out. He had to take the breaking ball, move out to the side of it. Not a particularly great jump by Burks, but he'll come up with his first stolen base of the year and the first for Boston. Ellis in scoring position with one out for Jack Clark. Big hop to Jacoby. He looked Burks back to second. And Clark is now over two. So how did he get in the park finally? Did well, he when he arrived at the gate, uh, he told the gentleman manning the gate. He was Charles Nagy, the starting pitcher for Cleveland. The fellow said he didn't believe him. Charles took out his license and showed him identification. He still did not believe him. So he had to call into the park and have a member of the Indians front office bring him a ticket. And he came through the gate. Sound like that security guy may have been taking his job a yeah. little too seriously. Well, a new stadium might be a new security <laughs> man who didn't really wow. quite understand. He came in like all the rest of the fans <laughs> with a ticket. Pretty good. Got to get a ticket to start to pitch your own game. <laughs> I might need a ticket to go get my scorecard if another gust of wind comes up. <laughs> If it isn't nailed down, it's not staying in the booth today. Never mind the trivia about <laughs> being one of the first two pitchers to start at Camden Yards. He may be the only pitcher that's had to have a give a ticket to get into <laughs> pitcher's own game. <laughs> Nagy, even with move on, one and one, battle of products of the Big East the Connecticut Husky facing the Seton Hall Pirate and it's one and two the changeup of Nagy has been so effective because he has been so timely with it not to mention the very good location every time he has chosen to work with the changeup he has had it just at the right sequence or in the right sequence of pitches to hit it just inside two and two on Vaughn. Well we talk about Red Sox pitchers getting those pitches. There's a pitch there that I feel that any pitcher should get. Here's a man who's been around the plate all afternoon. He's already rung up seven guys. He really deserves to get this pitch. It looks like he throws it right in the middle of Ortiz. Mm, that's a strike. Right. Looked like he had it right on the corner. See if the Red Sox can take advantage. That's ball three. That behind Ortiz, but not far enough for Ellis Burks to advance. The count is full with two outs in the top of the fourth. Cleveland leading two to nothing. Despite the fact that the Red Sox are out hitting the Indians two to nothing. Three two to Vaughn inside. Mo walks for the second time. Nagy has now walked three this afternoon, and the Red Sox have first and second with two up. Well, once again, Mo Vaughn being shown some respect by Nagy. Looked like he had him struck out, but on a three and two pitch for the second time, they've gone with a breaking ball to Mo Vaughn. Now this time. Uh, with a first base open and a right hander on deck, you might say, well, okay, uh, I don't have a problem with that. First base was open the last time, too, but there were two outs in that situation. Two on with two out for Luis Rivera. A little pop up by Erga in shallow right. Center didn't make the play. And the Red Sox are on the board as Burke scores. Well, we mentioned the wind buffeting the ball. And that looked to be one that was going to be easily handled by Carlos Bayerga, and he missed it. I think he missed it because he's backing up on the ball. He's backpedaling. And when you do that, you don't really have control of your body. So he just continues to go, and the ball, maybe at the last second, flutters. Whatever it was, it goes, looks like maybe off the tip of the glove of Bayerga, off the thumb. And the Red Sox do catch the break on the call to Vaughn as they turn it in to a run. 
And they have the tying run at third now. Still no word on the scoring on that play. John Flaherty takes a strike. It has been scored a hit for Rivera, and that's his first RBI of the season. Flaherty doubled down the third baseline in his first major league at bat. That's a little looper foul. And it's 0-2. Flaherty's coming off the, the better part of his career. Last year when he went back down to New Britain from after being at Pawtucket, he had 289 in 67 games there. By far and away the best offensive side of his career. Before that, only at Winterhaven had he hit as high as 260 in his professional career. A little lob. This one handled by Bayerga, who hears the mock cheer from the crowd here at Cleveland Stadium. The Red Sox get one, and after three and a half, it's the Indians two, and the Red Sox one. We have a day especially for you during Kids Weekend. April 26th, the Red Sox and Kenner team up to bring the first 15,000 fans, age 15 and younger, a starting lineup figurine compliments of Kenner products. Phone the Red Sox ticket office at 617-267-8661 for more information. Out in the bullpen, Tom Bolton and Tony Fossis with the heater pointed at them. We do not have one of those up here. <laughs> pointed at us. <laughs> Paul Sorrento looks at strike one. Paul's rounded to first his first time up. Paul was born in Somerville. Makes his home now in Peabody. He went to St. John's Prep in Danvers. Traded to the Indians just prior to the end of spring training by the Minnesota Twins in exchange for two minor leaguers, two pitchers, Oscar Munoz and Curtis Laskanik. And about two hours after the trade was made, Ken Herbeck got hurt. All that has to be traded. On the ground to second. One out. And it was really fortunate for Cleveland that the trade was made. John Hart, their general manager, was going out to play golf at spring training out in Arizona and just had a hunch that maybe after talking to Andy McPhil for a while, they could get the deal done that morning. So he called from his car phone to Andy McPhail on the way to the golf course. Said he waited until he came back from golf. Herbeck would have been injured. The trade, in all likelihood, would not have been made. Well, that would have meant that this man here might have gotten a lot of playing time at first base for the Indians somewhere along the line. Of course, Jacoby, originally with Atlanta, came over uh, in a trade with the Braves. Some yeoman work at third and then went to Oakland last year, involved in a trade, was released by Oakland and then re signed as a free agent by the Indians. That's well hit to center. Burks drifting back to make the catch. Two outs in the fourth. The Indians lead two to one. But we may be seeing in this ballpark, Sean, that happens often when you're in a round or a somewhat uh, horseshoe-shaped park. The wind indication is that it's blowing in. But I think what may be happening here today, the wind is coming in and then turning, and then it's actually aiding balls being hit in there. That ball that Plantier had to shag down seemed to get some extra help, and that ball seemed to go farther than it was actually hit. Ortiz, a slow chopper, Boggs, throws him out. Well, the even-numbered innings have been fine for Matt Young. He retired the Indians in order in the second and now in the fourth. He yielded single runs in the first and third. And after four, it's 2-1 Cleveland. Kids, the Red Sox know you love baseball. That's why in 1992, they have days in your honor. Kids opening day on April 18th and kids weekend April 25th and 26th. These days are sponsored by the Red Sox, Leaf Incorporated, Shamit Bank, and Kenner Products. Phone 617-267-8661 for more information. Our very alert crew under the direction of John Wilson has spotted uh, the home field advantage, the home heater advantage, if you will. That is the heater in the Indians' bullpen. Look at the size of that thing. And now the Red Sox. A little squirt gun by comparison. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe the big one, 350,000 BTUs. Maybe that one over there, what? That's about what, a seventh the size and make it 50,000 BTUs. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you cheated. Our cameras <laughs> read that right off 
the heaters during the commercial break. Seven times the output. <laughs> Wade Boggs beginning the fifth. Red Sox trailing two to one against Charles Nagy. Top of the order, Boggs, Reed, and Greenwell. Wade is twice bounced to second. Two balls and a strike. Nagy has walked three and struck out seven. He's allowed three hits. As it turned out with the 19 inning game yesterday, hitters can have a pretty good seasonal start or a bad seasonal start with a Saturday and Sunday game or the doubleheader today. Lewis, low throw, Sorrento with another nice play. He made several fine plays in the field yesterday, and he saved an error for Mark Lewis. Boggs now 0 for 3. This one, not the longest kind of hop that's an easy one for the first baseman to come up with either. Lewis will get a little bit sidearm with this throw, and it'll turn over quickly, get into the dirt, and Sorrento really has to take a ball that looked like it's getting ready to eat him up, and made a nice sweeping play of it. Now Jody Reed takes a fastball outside. Jody has bounced to third and struck out. Last year with Minnesota, Sorrento was in 13 ball games. He had a, a total of 77 total chances for the Twins without committing an error. He's done everything you can do in the minor leagues, but he just didn't have the opportunity to play for the Twins with the lineup that they had ahead of him. And the question is, what will happen in a month or so when Reggie Jefferson, a highly thought of young player, returns from the disabled list? Two and one on Reed. Two to one the score. We're in the fifth. First of two this afternoon here in Cleveland. And the home opener tomorrow on TV 38 and many of our network stations at one o'clock. For those of you watching on TV 38 Sports Beat, gets our opening day coverage started from Fenway Park at noon. With Upton Bell, Clark Booth, Peter Gammons, and Mike Barnacle. Look forward every year to Mike Barnacle's forecast of the Red Sox season. Look forward to hearing his comments tomorrow. Three and two, the count now on Reed. A lot of pitches being thrown by Nagy. Obviously, with the seven strikeouts, you have to throw a number, but this is the fifth three ball and two strike count that Nagy has had this afternoon. Jody out ahead of it. Still three and two. Well, the New York Yankees are off and running again today. They're four and oh, and perhaps on their way to five and oh, they lead Detroit at Tiger Stadium five to nothing after an inning and a half. Scott Sanderson, Scott Aldred, the starters. The Tigers 0 and 5, the Yankees 4 and 0. Toronto's 5-0, and, oh, and the Blue Jays lead again at home, 1-0, over Baltimore after two. Reed sinks one in the left, a base hit. The Red Sox have had at least one base runner in every inning. And the single for Jody is the fourth Boston hit today. A couple of teams back-to-back -back early in the season for Reed to try to get some base hits under his belt early. Cleveland behind the New York Yankees, one of the higher batting averages that Jody enjoys against an opponent. Over 300 in his career against the Indians. Sorry about that. I think my water has frozen in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be public skating. Very All the little soon. people in that That's big cup. <laughs> Mike Greenwell. Has walked and struck out. A little pop up in shallow left. That could be a problem. It is not. As Hill came on to take charge after a slow start. Two outs, Reed back to first. In the fifth, 2 1, Cleveland. Toronto's run at Skydome came on Joe Carter's first home run of the year. Those are the only two games underway in the American League. Now Ellis Burks. Chopped foul into the Red Sox dugout. Ellis struck out swinging in the first. He 
Started the fourth with an infield single, stole second, and scored the Red Sox run on a single by Luis Rivera. The foul ball got a chunk of Louie. Oh, and one on Burks. Oh, and two. In the National League, Montreal, looking for its fourth straight win, leads the Mets, who are off to a slow start, two to nothing in the bottom of the third at Shea Stadium. Von Calderon, a home run for the Expos. Off Brett Saberhagen, making his second start for the Mets. He's 0 1. Chris Haney, the starter for Montreal. Pittsburgh, three. Philadelphia, one. After three at Philadelphia, Ruben Amaro Jr., his third home run. He's filling in more than admirably for Lenny Dykstra. The pitch out. Would have almost bet on that pitch out there. It's a perfect combination. Trying to get Burks off the hook, and then he represents a leadoff hitter in the next inning for you. Wouldn't be surprised to see Jody going at any time now. Not going here, and Burks rolls one down under the glove of Jacoby. And in the left. Tossed back in by Albert Bell. On the lineup card that was posted, they had Hill as the left fielder and Bell as the DH, but it is Bell in left field. And Hill the DH. And Burks has his second hit of the game. It's a roller, and really not a hard one, and Jacoby just couldn't quite get over far enough. To could glove it. Jody with the play right in front of him will hold up at second. Red Sox out hitting the Indians five to nothing. The trailing two to one. The tying run at second. The go ahead run at first for Phil Plantier, who's looking to put it in play for the first time against Nagy. Phil over two with two strikeouts. Both times he has gone down on a swinging third strike. One ball and one strike. For Cleveland, two runs, no hits, and no errors. For Butch Hobson's Red Sox, one run, five hits, and one error. In the air and left, Albert Bell made an awkward catch on the edge of the warning track. Red Sox strand two more. They've now left seven runners on base and halfway through game one of the doubleheader. Cleveland two, Boston one. To your day at Fenway Park with a new personalized full color storybook. My day at Fenway Park, a great gift for children and baseball lovers of any age. Customized with your name, hometown, favorite player and more. Plus starting lineup and final score of any Red Sox game only 1995. Remember your day at Fenway forever with my day at Fenway Park to order on 1-800-FENWAY-6. That's 1-800-FENWAY-6. Swing and a miss by Mark Lewis. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, Cleveland still leading 2-1. to one. Lewis drew a leadoff walk in the third and scored. The second Indian run. Indians without a hit through four innings, but Young has walked three, and two of the walkers have scored. He used to lead off walk a Lofton in the first, and he scored the first Indian run. Lewis walked to start the third and scored. That is off the window in the press box where those wimps from the newspapers have the windows down or up. Closed. Closed. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is frozen. Well, they are. Here we are. You down. see no windows here. <laughs> and Lewis strikes up. That's the third strikeout of the game. Here we are. No glass in front of us. <laughs> they are actually down because the windows do come from up here. Yes. To down, down to this point. So you're right. <laughs> Just proves one thing. We're really dumb. <laughs> and cold else, to go along with it. Everybody else is indoors and we're freezing and keep complaining about it. <laughs> Lofton uh, takes the ball high. It's not really that bad. I mean, it, uh, believe me, I've been in this ballpark when it's a lot, a lot mm -hmm. colder. I remember about 1972 we opened the season in here and it was like this when the game started beautifully sun. Probably about uh, 
40 45 degrees or so but as soon as that sun took its turn to go back behind the stands here and fell below the roof line very mm -hmm. very cold 2 and 0 on Lofton he hasn't seen many strikes from Young he's walked twice and that's dangerous with a man with this speed Lofton walked, stole second and third, and scored in the first inning. He walked again in the third, was erased on a fielder's choice. Ahead here, three and all. And he walks for the third time. And the Mike Argrove has a couple of options here with now. The bunt is not really necessary to move a guy like Lofton along with his base stealing ability. You might want to save that out to move him from second to third if it becomes necessary. This is an area here where Mike Matt Young has really worked long and hard in spring training and making throws over to first base. There's another area in which his confidence has really been on the upturn. Five straight balls now. Ball one high to Glenn Allen Hill who has struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. He stole second after reaching in the third. Lofton back to first. Lofton stole 62 bases in 1990 at Osceola when he was in the Houston Astros organization. This is his first year with the Indians. He came over in December along with Dave Rohde. He's running. Flaherty's throw on Hopper. Just safe is Lofton. Nice play by Jody Reed to field that on a hop and nearly tag Lofton out. Lofton is going to be one of those guys that looks like Sean can make a lot of things happen in a ball game. The stolen base right here. Good quick throw by Flaherty in an effort to rush and try to throw the man out. He throws low but right on line and it is indeed a good play by Jody Reed to keep this ball in the infield. One thing you think of as a catcher with this kind of speech to running is to make good throws. Uh, certainly you get caught up in that uh, wanting to get rid of it quicker. That forces you to make bad throws, and with that kind of speed, it's an easy move for the guy to get up and move right on to third base. So you actually throw him into two stolen bases. You play by Reed to keep that ball somewhere around and keep Lofton at second. Now you got to be heads up here once again. He's already stolen third in this game once. If you don't watch him very closely at second base, you give him that little edge, you'll be standing over there with one out. That might have been part of the message delivered by Rich Gale. Three stolen bases in the game for Lofton. Hill with a pop up back in our direction. The Indians lead two to one. You mentioned Joe Morgan uh, stating some bases in our around the horn. Earlier in the ball game, Joe Morgan had a quote a number of years ago when he was playing. He says, I feel that my stolen base talent will make a lot of things happen in a game. If I can keep an infielder up on the edge just enough to make him do something to rush along, then I've done my job. There he goes. Lofton heading for third. It's strike three. A one hop throw played off the chest by Boggs. Four stolen bases for Lofton. You're going to keep walking him. This is in all likelihood what's going to keep happening. So you walk this man. You in fact are throwing him a triple just about or certainly a double the way it looks so far in this season. Good play by Boggs here. Two good plays by the Red Sox infielders now. This one especially a good play by Boggs making sure that that ball does not get by him and into the outfield. It's an easy trip in for Lofton to get up and come that extra 90 feet for the run. Strikeout of Hill was the fourth for Young. Now Bayerga, who has driven in both Cleveland runs. That'll be a tough play for Rivera. His long throw in time. Nice play by Louie. And the Indians leave Lofton at third. They've now stranded four. We play five innings at Cleveland Stadium. And the Indians lead two to one.
scored in the American League. The Yankees still lead Detroit by a score of five to nothing. That's now in the fifth inning. Scott Sanderson working on the shutout. Toronto won in Baltimore nothing in the third on Joe Carter's home run. Mason and Wells the starters. Later on, Milwaukee and California. Fazio against Langston. Chicago and Oakland. Jack McDowell against John Briscoe. Kansas City is at Seattle. Mike Boddicker against Eric Hansen. And Texas is at Minnesota. Kevin Brown and Pat Mahomes. We'll check the National League during the inning. The inning is the sixth. The hitter is Jack Clark. He has struck out and bounced to third. Move on on deck and then Luis Rivera against Charles Nagy. Each manager and pitching coach getting what they are looking for from their starters today and that's innings with the bullpen depleted with yesterday's 19 inning game and with a game still to come here today. Foul ball in the National League Montreal leads New York two to one. They're now in the fourth at Shea. Pittsburgh still leads Philadelphia three to one now in the fifth inning of Philadelphia. Atlanta won in San Francisco nothing in the bottom of the first at Atlanta Tom Glavin trying to go to 2 and 0 on one St. Louis and Chicago just underway as are Cincinnati and Houston one and two on Clark Los Angeles at San Diego later on Martinez and Harris will be the starters at Jack Murphy Stadium one ball and two strikes on Jack Clark. Off the end of the bat and into the seats. Two and two. Indian ball club so very young they average 26 years of age. You're reading there, looking at their numbers, most of their lineup out there today in that 23, 24, and 25 year old range. The grandfather, Brooke Jacoby, over mm -hmm. third, he's 32. And, and he probably will not be the third baseman when Jim Tomey no, no, he won't. comes off the disabled and list. That's going to be about another, what, 10 days, two mm -hmm. weeks, they think. He's working out at third base today with Jim Tomey. And the Indians have done something a little new in baseball. Uh, they used their imagination. They signed a number of their players to multi-year contracts, highlighted by Sandy Alomar Jr.'s three-year, actually four-year contract, which is three years and an option, a little over $7 million. Clark strikes out. His struggle continues. Over three today is Jack. Eight strikeouts for Nagy. He's had at least one in every inning except last inning. Hasn't really needed to come up with a big strikeout that often, but he's just getting them. And he's doing it with a variety of pitches. Mostly, though, with that good sinking fastball. Rick Adair, the pitching coach at the mound. He's in his first season as the Indians pitching coach. He served under Mike Hargrove at Colorado Springs when Hargrove managed the Indians AAA club. Guys are talking it over down there. Okay, men, who wants to be the first one out of here today since we all saw action yesterday? Charles Nagy has now matched his career high for strikeouts in a game with eight. Mo Vaughn has it go off the glove of Bayerga and into center field. So after we heaped praise on Carlos Bayerga earlier for his improvement at second base and adjusting to that position, he's had kind of a tough day. They've scored that one a hit, and he's benefited a couple of times from favorable official scoring decisions. One of the few players in all of baseball history who has started more than 70 games at two different infield positions. He did that for the Indians last year. 79 games at third, 75 games at second. And right away, as I mentioned, the double play numbers turned favorably for the Indians once that happened. Jerry Brown was getting most of the playing time at second for the Indians. Luis Rivera looked at a strike. Louis drove in the Red Sox run with a looping single in the shallow right center. That's all it looked like. Bayerga would catch, but he missed it. And Ellis Burke scored on the play. Vaughn at first with one out in the top of the sixth. Cleveland two, Boston one. 
Red Sox trailing despite the fact that they are out hitting the Indians six to nothing. Little lob in a shallow right that will fall in. The tying run is at second. And Rivera continues to sizzle in the early season. Not exactly two ringing base hits today, but all of a sudden he is six for nine for the year. This one could be a little painful. See where he gets it down toward the brand of the bat. So it'll sting a little, but not an awful lot. But that sting won't last long once he sees it fall in front of uh, Mark Witten for his second base hit of the ball game. On at second, Rivera at first, one out. And the batter, John Flaherty. Ball one low. Flaherty doubled in his first major league at bat. Down the left field line in the third. He popped to second in the fourth. Along with Sandy Alomar Jr., those three years' contracts were also signed by Bayerga, Mark Whitten, and today's starter, Charles Nagy. And their attitude is... They can't afford to pay high salaries, so they'll reward the players for signing the contracts at perhaps less money than they might receive in a year or two if the players waited by giving them extra years on contract and some security. The Indians really aiming toward 1994 when they're going to move into a new ballpark just down the street. Tough to miss the hole in downtown Cleveland <laughs> that has been built to make way for that ballpark. Two and one on Flaherty. Line and caught. Jacoby. Looked Vaughn back in the second. He had a chance to double off Mo, but it looked like Jacoby was having a tough time getting the ball out of his glove. It might have been that Bayerga was not at the bag as well. I'll tell you, this is not fair. When you hit a ball this hard and somebody's there to catch it. It's not fair. One reason that Jacoby may not have thrown back. Mo Vaughn's kind of a wide body guy. Mo may have been directly in his line. Mm -hmm. He wanted to throw it back, and it looked as if he had time to double off Mo. Every time I see this guy now, I kind of think that he reminds me facially enough to bring Fred Couples mm -hmm. to my mind. He's kind of a quiet guy like Freddie. He doesn't make a lot of noise. Now Wade Boggs with a tying run at second. Go ahead run at first. Wade 0 for 3 today. Now hitting 200 for the season. He's grounded out three times. Twice to second. Once to short. There is action in the Cleveland bullpen for the first time today. Right-hander Brad Arnsberg is throwing. Of course he worked yesterday. <laughs> for an inning in two thirds. Out there without a sweatshirt on underneath his uniform. Up the middle, off the mound, and fielded by Lewis. The bases are loaded. Tough to tell which team benefited from the direction of the ball. Might have actually got a piece of Nagy as Jim Warfield, the Indian trainer, is out, and Nagy is walking around behind the mound. It's tough to tell if that ball was going to go through in the center or if perhaps Lewis or Bayegger would get it behind the second base bag. It looked like it was going to go in the center field because it looked like it was going to go over the mound without taking that big high kick. I think it gets Nagy in the shoe area. I sounded like some leather smacking against leather. Mm -hmm. See, look, hit, look, where that ball hits there and the velocity of it, I don't think the middle infielders would have been able to get to it, so it may have cost the Red Sox a run momentarily. That Nagy in the right foot or on the lower leg, and he's going to take a couple of tosses to see if he's okay. Mike Hargrove, the manager, also at the mound. It's a hit for Boggs. Eight hits now for the Red Sox. Three in this inning. The bases are loaded with two outs. Nagy tells Rich Garcia he's fine and will continue. That will not count as a trip to the mound. Red Sox have had base runners in every inning, but they've only scored one run. Jody Reed, the batter, with Vaughn at third, Rivera at second, and Boggs at first. And with the Indians leading two to one in the sixth. 
Breaking ball. Back Jody off the plate, but it was a strike. Jody at 364 with the bases loaded last year. He's one for three today, a single to left in the fifth. That breaking ball was low and away. One ball and one strike. Obviously, the reliever or the bullpen action is due to maybe some tiring setting in for Nagy. When you throw a lot of breaking balls and you get tired, there's a tendency now maybe to hang one. We'll play in Jody's favor. Breaking ball just outside. Ortiz wanted it. Didn't get it. Two and one. Mike Greenwell waiting in the on deck circle. Down to third, another nice play by Jacoby. He beats Rivera to the bag. The Red Sox leave the bases loaded. They've now stranded 10 in six innings. And Nagy giving Jacoby a well-deserved pat on the back. We go to the bottom of the sixth in Cleveland. The Indians still on top, two to one. Well, the strike over in the NHL, there are a number of games to be made up before Great. they get to the playoffs. Well, Monday night, we'll have the action for you at 7.30 be the Bruins as they return to action on TV 38 and also be the seventh player award ceremonies to prior to the Hartford Whalers Brewers game that's Monday night at 730 right here on television 38 as the NHL gets back into action. Brooke Jacoby the man of the moment for the Indians 67 games he played in last year combination with Cleveland and Oakland only made two errors and well he made two sparkling plays here to keep this a 2-1 game in favor of the Indians. Ooh, that line drive off the bat of Flaherty, or certainly that smash there, could mm -hmm. have easily gotten by. The Indians lead 2-1. They are still looking for their first hit off Matt Young as they come up in the bottom of the sixth with the middle third of the order. Albert Bell, Mark Witten, and Paul Sorrento. That's to Rivera. One out. Bell now 0 for 3. Well, it's great that the NHL players and owners got together and they're going to start playing again. We look forward to the end of the regular season and the playoffs here on TV 38. After going through a couple of those as a professional baseball player, I'll tell you, you get, you start to wonder for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, even th this was relatively short by uh, some of the baseball strikes, certainly by 1981 strike. But start to wonder if you will have a chance to play again. Well, Lewis starting to look that way, certainly, for the NHL. There's a lot of talk about no hockey until the fall. 2 and 0 the count on Mark Witten. It was fly deep to right and bounced to second, 0 for 2. Young has walked four and struck out four. Two of the four walkers have scored. That's the only damage done by Cleveland today. With one out in the bottom of the sixth. Mm, good off-speed pitch by Matt. And he's had a number of those today in some sequences. Very good delivery with it. Motion is staying solid. The arm speed seems to be there with it. There it is. And then, oops, pulls the string on the batter. That would be a pitch there if he can use that more and more. That would really help him when he's behind the count to hit it. Ball broke sharply inside, and it's a full count on Witten. Breaking ball just missed. Witten is on with one out in the sixth inning, following the fifth walk issued by Matt Young. The Indians lead two to one. We'll pause for station identification along the TV 38 Red Sox Network. TV 38, WSBK TV, Boston. Sean McDonough with Bob Montgomery, our producer director, John Wilson. Paul Sorrento, the hitter, ball one high. Sorrento has grounded out twice. He's 0 for 2. Our director back at the flagship TV 38 today is Jack Lavolsi. We want to wish Jack a happy birthday. The 
and you have a birthday coming up this week. What week? Is, what, yeah? Yes, you do. What day is it? I know because I read it in Joe Fitzgerald's column. Hmm. One and one the count on Sorrento. It's on uh, Thursday, your birthday, by the way. That's close enough. Peter Hoy up for the second time in the Red Sox bullpen. Just wanted to give your legion of fans a chance to send a card while there's still time to get it there on time. I appreciate it. Mm. Scary swing there by Sorrento, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Did you mention that he hit the first home run at Orioles Park? I did at not Camden mention that, Yard? but you are right, trivia. sir. Three run homer to provide the Cleveland Indians with their win that they have this year. A one two pitch breaking ball miss two and two. Paul hit a number of minor league home runs his biggest year at Orlando hit 27 round trippers and that's really when he drew the attention to themselves that he was going to move up and all of a sudden though he got behind that big guy that got over from Minnesota and the brakes were put on. They have Witten picked off. Rivera to Vaughn he tagged him. Ooh. I don't think Mo thought he did, but no. Dan Morrison said he got a piece of him. Mo continued after Witten anyway, and they pick him off. One, three, six, three. Might have been out both times anyway, mm -hmm. but not before he got back to the bag. Usually, though, the second effort by the infielder, or in this case, Mo Vaughn, the first baseman, that second effort is an indicator that he didn't get him the first time. Good move by Young going over there. Look at this. He's picked the man off. Let's see if there's contact. Looked like there mm -hmm. was contact there. Maybe Mo just wasn't sure, but they get the call. Matt Young, who did not throw to a base with a runner on at all last year, the word's going to get around now that he can as he finishes the inning with a strikeout of Paul Sorrento. That's five. The Indians are still hitless. We've played six in Cleveland. 2 1, Indians. We thought it would be a great idea if we got one of those big, tall, famous basketball players to advertise Dairy Mart's new 44-ounce Super Slam fountain drink. But it was the playoffs, and all those guys were practicing. So we called on our founder, Charlie Nirenberg. Hey, aren't you Charlie Nirenberg of Dairy Mart? Yep, that's me. You look a little thirsty. How about some Pepsi? You must be Dairy Mart. Hi, Bob Cousy here for your New England Lincoln Mercury dealer. You know, after all the excitement, the crowds, the noise of the fella camp, there's nothing like getting into a new Lincoln town car. It's the quietest, smoothest luxury car you can own. Not to mention its powerful V8 engine, standard dual airbag protection, and more. Lincoln town car, the quietest luxury car you can own. After all, it's still double overtime out there. See your New England Lincoln Mercury dealer today. If you want the whole story. People come to that gym night in, night out to see one behind the back no look pass from Larry Bird. Get me a president. You don't just throw them all on the court and have everything work out okay. You've got to read between the lines. Sports Beat, live from Fenway, Monday at noon, before the Sox face Baltimore on TV 38 Sports. Just listen to the talk show. See the best in collegiate baseball action at Fenway Park on Tuesday, April 21st and Wednesday, April 22nd when Boston College, Boston University, Harvard, and Northeastern compete for the third annual Baseball Beanpot Trophy. Games are at noon and 3 p.m. each day. Tickets may be purchased in advance at each school's athletic department office and in advance and on the day of the game in person at the Red Sox ticket office. Tickets are $3. Not much doubt about where Mark Whitten was heading when well, there looks seems to be contact mm -hmm. there on the first time. Matt Young, as you mentioned, didn't throw over there with a runner last year at all. Already made some throws over there. Very good throws over there and picked the guy off. Just the word gets around last year. Hey, this guy never Absolutely. throws to a base. We don't even have to worry about it. Now they will have to think about it. Mike Greenwell at the plate. One and one the count. Red Sox trail two to one. They're batting in the seventh against Charles Nagy, who's gone all the way for Cleveland. Greenwell has walked, struck out, and flied to left. 0 for two. Burks to follow and then Plantier. Another 
good pitcher who never threw to first base was Kenny Holtzman. Mm -hmm. Pitched so many years for the Cubs and then finally came over to the American League with the Oakland Athletics. He never threw to first and he didn't have anything wrong with throwing. I mean, he didn't have something against uh, not being able to throw at all. The 2 2. Strike him out. That's a career high nine strikeouts for Charles Nagy. Pride of Fairfield, Connecticut. Handling himself very well this afternoon. Over the Red Sox have had many chances to score. They've stranded 10 base runners. They've had eight hits, and Nagy has walked three. Off speed pitch this time to Green. Well, I mentioned earlier three pitches that Nagy is getting over the plate fastball, breaking ball, and the changeup. Brad Arnsberg is throwing again in the Cleveland bullpen as Ellis Burks took the ball low. Ellis two for three today, an infield single and a single to left. He has stolen a base and he scored the Red Sox run in the fourth. Outside, 2-0. Oh. Those of you just joining us, this is game one of a doubleheader. Roger Clemens will start for the Red Sox in game two against Scott Scudder. Hmm. Oh, what great movement this man has had on his fastball and a lot of his pitches all day long. The fastball and the changeup really giving some Red Sox hitters some fits. He's doing something here that you don't do a lot of. You don't strike out the Red Sox batting order usually eight, nine, ten times a ball game. You don't do that. Two and two now. This is a far cry from Nagy's performance last year in his only start against the Red Sox. That was here on August 13th in the first game of a doubleheader. And the Red Sox touched him up for 10 hits and six earned runs and five and a third inning. Nagy led the Indians last year with 10 wins. And he's gone full with Burks. He also led all American League rookies with 33 starts and 211 and a third innings. Three two pitch breaking ball high and tight Burks is aboard the Red Sox again have the tying run on and they continue they have had a runner on in every inning. The shadows starting to make their way from behind the plate out toward the pitcher's mound. Not really a problem for the hitters at the moment. No it's got to get out just about to the edge of that grass for it to really become a problem. Bill Plantiers struck out twice and fly deep to left. Foul tip into the middle of Ortiz. One strike on Plantier. The Indians lead two to one. We're in the seventh. The Red Sox have eight hits. The Indians do not have a hit in this game. Burks stole the Red Sox first base of the season back in the fourth. He bluffs as Plantier takes a breaking ball for strike two. Sometimes it's a little difficult to tell if, it, if Burks really wanted to go and didn't feel that he had a good jump. Once he saw it was a breaking ball and where it was, he was a little disgusted with himself as if he was going to go and then changed his mind. Nasty breaking ball for Ooh. strike three. Third time Plantier is fan. 10 strikeouts for Charles Nagy. Red Sox batters this year have been rung up a number of times already. Now they have struck out 38 times in this their fourth game of the season. I'm going to tip your hat to this guy today. Boy, he has thrown up some kind of performance. Jack Clark tied up by the fastball one strike on Clark Jack has struck out twice today and bounced the third he's 0 for three he's now fanned eight times in the four games and he's one for 16 this season Burks is running they pitch out Ortiz got him
seventh inning stretch at Cleveland Stadium. The Indians lead two to one. You know, Diet Pepsi is setting up aha uh -huh boosts all across the country so you can see for yourself who's got that magic aha uh -huh ingredient. Does this have aha? Uh -huh? Check it out, baby. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. With 100%, uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the elegant new J30. A classic luxury sedan in an infinity kind of way. A driver's car with two airbags, soft leather appointments, and tasty wood. Hey, pal, don't you even think about it. The new J30 from Infinity. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. This Red Sox game summary is brought to you by your local Midas muffler break and alignment shops. The Indians runs, single runs in the first and third. Both times they got a leadoff walk that came around to score. The Red Sox run came in the fourth, a Luis Rivera RBI single. Meanwhile, Charles Nagy of Cleveland has struck out a career high 10 through seven innings, and Matt Young is not allowed to hit through six, but he trails two to one because of those walks. Matt has walked five, struck out five. It's Brooke Jacoby starting the seventh. He has lined the first and fly to center. One and one the count. Junior Ortiz to follow and then Mark Lewis. Two balls and one strike. Took something off it and fooled Jacoby two and two. Jacoby rolled the dice contractually last year and lost. The Indians, while he was still with Cleveland in the early season, offered him a contract extension of 1.2 million a year. He declined it. That's in the hole. Boggs to his feet. Throws him out. That's about as close as the Indians have come to a hit in this game. Red Sox infielders continue to make good plays. This is the first one, first tough play they've had to make on a grounder. Bond right dead in the hole. He'll get up. He'll have time to throw out Jacoby. And he does. Junior Ortiz took a ball. He's over two, is grounded out twice. Once to short, once to third. I mentioned Jacoby offered the contract. He declined. Went on to Oakland. Did not reach a contract agreement with them. So instead of the 1.2 million a year that Cleveland offered him, he signed for 350,000 upon his return to Cleveland. The Indians payroll 8.1 million. The Red Sox is over 42 million. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Two and two on Ortiz. Now, as I mentioned, it's a young club, average age 26, along with Jacoby, this man here, Junior Ortiz, at age 32. Find somebody older than that, you got to get to the coaching staff of the mm -hmm. Indians. And even that's a fairly young bunch. Yes. As is the Red Sox group. Mm -hmm. Another 2 2 from Young. Defensive swing and a foul ball. Now to Dave Nelson. An interesting story about Junior Ortiz last year. 
right after the All-Star break. Red Sox were in Minnesota to start the second half of the season. At that time, Brian Harper was hurt, had a rib cage pull. Junior Ortiz had gone to Puerto Rico during the All-Star break and was not in the ballpark in time to take any kind of batting practice or anything. As a matter of fact, he got to the ballpark at 7.32. With the schedule start at 7.35. Junior said I was a little leery, a little weary from flying. He says I couldn't see and had to face Roger Clemens in the ball game. But he got that time to strap the gear on and make the start. Remember Tom Kelly running around. He was trying to figure out who he could put behind the plate because Harper just couldn't make it. He was hurting too bad. Ball four. That is the sixth walk issued by Young. That brings up the shortstop Mark Lewis. Lewis drew a leadoff walk in the third and scored the second Cleveland run. He struck out swinging in the fifth. The Indians lead two to one. The Red Sox are out hitting the Indians eight to nothing. One error in the game committed by Boston. Change up, missed low to Lewis. Peter Hoy up again. This is the third time with a six foot seven right hander has started throwing in the Red Sox bullpen today. Ortiz is running, and Flaherty dropped the pitch. It's a stolen base for Ortiz. His first of the season, and his first ever in the American League. It's his seventh major league stolen base in 540 games. John Flaherty seemed to rush just a bit here. Ball, it's up. Really didn't handle the ball. It wobbled going into the glove. Couldn't find the grip on it. Loses it. Indians wind up with another stolen base. They're sixth in this ball game. They now have eight on the season. If I've added them all up correctly today. Butch Hobson on his way to the mound. With the count two and zero on Lewis. Which says he and the Red Sox very anxious to get home. It's been a long road. They left Winter Haven, went to Washington, D.C. to play some exhibition games, then to New York. On to Cleveland. Most of the players have not seen their families in a couple of weeks. The 2 0 to Lewis. High and away, 3 0. First base is open. Well, Lewis is the number nine hitter. Kenny Lofton is on deck. Young has yet to retire him. Ball four, back-to-back -back walks. And it's quite possible that Young could be running out of gas. Although you know Hobson would not want to take him out of the game with he is not allowed a hit in the seventh inning. On the other hand, you have to be concerned about winning the game too. That's the number one concern. Those last two throws by Matt Young seem to be tired throws. Mm -hmm. Not good popping leg action. Not sort of the ball stayed up very high and didn't seem to have a great deal of velocity on them. And he's facing a guy now he hasn't been able to throw the ball over the plate to all day. Kenny Lofton, who has walked three times, stolen four bases, and scored a run. Nasty breaking ball for strike one. I like the way Flaherty has handled Matt Young this afternoon. This is a couple breaking balls, I mean, fastballs up high. And starts a guy off you've had trouble with with a breaking ball. Gets it over. Another way to make the major league debut, handling the pitcher who's not allowed to hit in the seventh inning. One and one on Lofton. Two to one Cleveland. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Runners at first and second and one out. Chopped slowly towards short. 
That's all they can get with the speedy Lofton running down the line. They erased Lewis at second, six to four. Ortiz to third on the play. First and third and two outs. Now, Hobson obviously would like to maybe come back to the mound. He can't do that because mm -hmm. Young's got to go with it. He would like to talk about this situation with his infielders word on word. Now they're going to have to really rely on the signs and make sure that they don't mess anything up here as far as throwing through is concerned. You know Lofton is going to be headed to second short order. Larry had trouble with the first pitch to Glen Allen Hill. It's ball one. Hill has struck out twice and reached on a fielder's choice. He has one of the six stolen bases for the Indians today. High and away, 2-0. and oh. Hill at the plate with Junior Ortiz at third. And Kenny Lofton at first. Three and all. Oh. In those last couple of throws, tired looking pitches from Matt Young. This is his first start of the year. And with the off days, it's been a while since he worked. And his last appearance was April 5th. In Washington, D.C. Three and one the countdown. Chop down to third. Boggs. Got him. The Indians strand two. They've now left six. And Cleveland is still hitless. As we go to the eighth inning. In game one of the doubleheader. The Indians two and the Red Sox one. When they thought it couldn't get any weirder, it did. They even brought their own music. Awesome! Hey, fellas, how about a cold bud? A bud? Obviously, we thought a light. Oh, that's cold. Dick Clark for Wish 99.5. Starting your day off right can make all the difference. A relaxing cup of coffee? and the soft favorites of yesterday and today on Wish 99.5 FM. Wish plays the artists you love. Barbara Streisand, Phil Collins, Whitney Houston. Songs that'll get your day off to a great start and keep you going all day long. So remember, every morning, turn on Wish 99.5 FM. Next time on Cheers, Sam's sex life gets the third degree from Dr. Diane. This will be frank and candid. We may be touching on some highly sensitive areas. Ooh, wow. I like the sound of it already. <laughs> yeah, Sammy the stud is getting ready. Sam. No, not now. I'm uh, going to prepare us for my lecture here. Yeah. It's about time I gave something back to the sport that's given me so much. It's Sexual Encounters 101 on Cheers. Monday, okay. 7 on CB 38. Matt Young in the Red Sox dugout. Talking to Johnny Pesky and his battery mate John Flaherty. The Indians without a hit against Young through seven. And as we go to the eighth, Brad Arnsberg has come on in relief of Charles Nagy trying to protect a two to one Cleveland lead. The name of Arnsberg is usually associated with the Texas Rangers. And he was signed as a free agent to a triple A contract by the Indians this year. And you're right. He worked yesterday, an inning and a third, gave up the hit. Today is his third appearance in this young season for the Indians. Has not been scored upon. Given up just a hit in two and two thirds inning of work so far. Walking a pair and striking out one. Sinker slider baller. Greeted by Jack Clark, who takes a ball in the dirt. For Nagy, pitched seven innings. Clark over for three today with two strikeouts. Nagy allowed one run, eight hits. The run was earned. He walked four and struck out a career high 10. Well, the Red Sox had their chances to do much more damage. They've left 10 men on base. 
through seven. And they had runners on in every inning against Nagy. Two and oh on Clark. Vaughn to follow. And then Luis Rivera is scheduled. Ball three. There is double barreled action in the Cleveland bullpen. The left hander is Derek Lilliquist, and the right hander is Steve Olin. The 3 0, ball four. Arnsberg throwing it all over the place. And that is bad against Clark. The reason Nagy is out of there, he threw 131 pitches. 77 of them strikes. This time of the year, that is more than enough. Clark lifted for a pinch runner. Herm Winningham comes on to run. We're in the eighth. The Indians lead two to one. Mo Vaughn at the plate. He squares the bunt and takes a strike. One thing we have seen from Butch Hodgson in spring training and into the regular season, he is not afraid to have any member of his lineup punt. Vaughn working on a perfect day, two walks and a single. And the Red Sox should be good at bunting with all the bunting practice that they've been doing. No sign of a bunt that time. Fastball for strike two. I talked with Butch Hobson before the game about his philosophy. He mentioned in New York, some managers don't believe in late in the ball game playing for a tie on the road which said he doesn't necessarily believe that it depends on the situation who you're playing against who you have up at the plate I don't find to agree with him I, I think that rule of thumb that's been kind of stuck with baseball so long is kind of outdated I, I think there are different ways that that you have to play I think you have to take into consideration who's pitching for you where I'm playing mm -hmm. how's my club going strike three Vaughn frozen by the fastball. First strikeout for Arnsberg. That is the 11th strikeout of Red Sox batters this afternoon. Ten of those, of course, going to the starter, Nagy. This man never particularly struck out a lot of people. He never spent an awful lot of time with the Rangers. He had a pretty good path cut between mm -hmm. Texas and Oklahoma City in his career in the last three or four years. Louis Rivera fouls one straight back. Louis two for three today with two singles. And he has driven in the only Red Sox run. He struck out back in the second. For Cleveland, two runs, no hits, and no errors. For the Red Sox, one run, eight hits, and one error. Winningham, the pinch runner at first, with one out in the eighth. And the 0-1 to Rivera is well outside. Winningham back safely. back again. Herm Winningham, of course, new to the American League. What he would like to do most of the time when he's put in, in this situation is get a read or two on some pitchers. He's not that familiar with many of them. He's running. Rivera slapped it towards second. They tag Winningham out, and it's a double play. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Indians two and the Red Sox one. In a survey of 170,000 design engineers, Ford Taurus was rated number one and Escort was best under $10,000. Come see why. 
at our Dare to Compare event. For a limited time, each dealer's marked as absolute lowest prices in all Taurus and Escorts. Plus, we're so sure Ford's quality can beat anyone's, we'll give you $100 if you buy a Honda or Toyota after test driving Taurus or Escort. So, uh, take it from 170,000 engineers or 100 George Washingtons. Ford's making it smart to buy now. Would you buy a John Deere lawn tractor if you could pick one up for the same price as some other mowers? Sure. Now you can get a 12 and a half horse John Deere for under $2,000 while supplies last. Dear I'm Thompsons, sorry, when the store ran out of Thompsons water seal, we finished our deck with another brand. What a mistake. The Thompson side beat it up, the really other side bad. nothing. Even the clerk agreed, nothing works like Thompsons. Sincerely, Becky Jones, Charlotte, North Carolina. Today's game is brought to you in part by the 9X Yellow Pages. If it's out there, it's in here. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. The only chance that Winningham would have had to have breaking this up would have been just flat run over by Erga. By Erga gets there with on the move. He stops, but then he didn't even stay in his way long enough to prevent the throw, and allowing the Indians to complete the double play. As a runner, the last thing you want to have happen is to be tagged by that second baseman on this play. Well, he runs right into it, and then, like I said, the only chance he had to really break it up was just to try to run right on through the play and break it up that way. Now the shadows are starting to get right in that tough mm -hmm. area for hitters. Which should help the pitchers. Matt Young has not allowed a hit. And we go to the bottom of the eighth, and this could conceivably be the final time at bat for the Indians this afternoon as they lead 2-1. to one. If the Red Sox don't score in the ninth, obviously Cleveland would not hit in the bottom of the ninth. Carlos Baerga takes the ball. Meet of the order coming up for Cleveland. One and one now on Baerga. He'll be followed by Albert Bell and Mark Witten. Batters three, four, and five. Ayerga has driven in both Cleveland runs. On a ground out in the first and on a fielder's choice in the third. Down to Boggs. One out in the eighth. Albert Bell, the batter. He's 0 for 3. Is fly to right, struck out swinging, and grounded to short. One strike on Bell. The Indians lead 2 to 1. They're batting in the eighth. One out on the base is empty. The Indians do not have a hit. The Red Sox have eight. Strike two. Zero oh and two. The ball and two strikes. In the night, the Red Sox have John Flaherty, Wade Boggs, and Jody Reed scheduled up. Eric Lilliquist is still warming up in the Cleveland pen. That pitch bounced about five feet in front of the plate. And it's two and two.
down to third. Boggs. Two outs. Young working now to Mark Witten. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. No hits for the Indians with two outs in the eighth. But Cleveland leads 2 to 1. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled away. Those shadows now almost halfway between the plate and the mound. Definitely a pitcher's aid here. The 1-2 pitch. He struck him out. If the Red Sox do not score in the ninth, that will be a complete game for Matt Young and a no-hitter. And it would be the first for the Red Sox since 1965 when Dave Moorhead no-hit Cleveland on September 16th at Fenway Park in a 2-0 Red Sox win. We go to the ninth with Cleveland leading 2-1. A car with a worn suspension is almost like having no suspension at all. The bumps are no longer absorbed so your wheels can actually leave the road. It's more than uncomfortable, it's unsafe. But Midas can put you back in control. With a complete inspection, a computerized diagnosis, and precision work by suspension experts, from shocks and struts to alignment, we'll fix your wagon. For a safer suspension, nobody beats Midas. So do my sound check. Hello, hello, hello. And I hear this woman's voice. Watch that last car. I'll show you. She grabbed the guitar. And then she started rocking. No, I mean rocking. You're pretty good. Not. Someone that hot deserves something this cold. Suddenly, I remember this was a budget spot. I like your style. John Wayne. Gacy. Don't you know a clown can get away with murder? The true story of the cold-blooded killer who almost got away, and the cop who brought him to justice. We have got to get a second search warrant before Gacy and that lawyer of his shut us down. A world television premiere. He won't find a thing. The case the FBI uses as a textbook example of how to catch a killer. A movie loft event coming this May. Today's game is brought to you in part by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Welcome back to Cleveland. I want to correct something, maybe correct something I said on the way to break. Jim Samia of the Red Sox Public Relations Department is on the phone conferring. Jim, why don't you go ahead and put this headset on. We'll put you right on the air. So we make sure we, we get the right information. What is the status of this no hitter is it or is it not a no hitter it is not a no hitter they changed the rules last year a pitcher has to pitch a nine complete innings mm -hmm. or more so if it's just eight innings it is not a no hitter the last pitcher to do this uh, pitch eight innings no hitter and lose is Andy Hawkins mm -hmm. July uh, 1st 1990 with the Yankees and he had a he had a no hitter mm -hmm. through eight innings and lost the game and did not get credit for a no-hitter. Well, at the time he did. At the time he did, yes. and he took it away last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, they changed a couple of the rules regarding no-hitters in the offseason. Rain shortened no-hitters to mm -hmm. fall into that category. That yeah. affected uh, the Perez brothers, mm -hmm. each of whom had done that. So we stand corrected and apologize for the misinformation. The, our feeling, Monty and I talked about it during the break, remembering what we had read in the offseason was that if the game was officially a complete game which this would be for Matt Young yep. you were credited with a no hitter mm -hmm. but that has been changed along with the other parts of the criteria for no hitters 
We're in a waiting situation now as with Scott Cooper announced as the pinch hitter for John Flaherty. A pitching change has been made by Cleveland and Derek Lilliquist has replaced Brad Arnquist. Well, thank you very much, Jim. You're welcome, Sean. You. I know you were on the phone checking on it, too, <laughs> yes, as the I writers was. started to besiege you. And uh -huh. Jim Samby of the Red Sox Public Relations Department. So now Cooper has gone back, and here's Brunanski. Of course, the way for Matt Young now to make sure he pitches a no-hitter is for the Red Sox to score in this inning. Get him a chance to go out there in the ninth. Lilliquist missing low, one and one the count. to the count. Steve Olin is throwing in the bullpen. 2-1 Cleveland were in the ninth. The Red Sox out hitting the Indians 8 to nothing. Brunanski to be followed by Boggs and Jody Reed. Just missed. Brunanski's been to the plate seven times this year with two hits. He's hitting 286. No homers, no runs batted in. back into the press box. Brad Arnsberg pitched one inning. He issued a walk. He struck out one. Full count now. Bob Montgomery has made his way down to the field. He's going to try to speak with Matt Young. Between games of the doubleheader. In game two, it'll be Roger Clemens and Scott Scudder. The man in the spotlight at the moment is Matt Young, hoping for another chance to take the mound and pitch a no-hitter against the Indians. Ball four. The lead runner is on for the Red Sox. Boggs takes a strike. The Indians lead two to one. We're in the top of the ninth. Boggs at the plate with Bradansky at first and nobody out. Boggs one for four, an infield single off the foot of the pitcher Nagy at the time in the sixth inning. Outside the breaking ball. Lilliquist is in his first season with Cleveland. Picked up by the Indians after he was waived by the San Diego Padres. He spent most of last season at the Padres AAA club in Las Vegas. Started his career with the Atlanta Braves. Base hit. So no, the tying run is to second, and the go-ahead run is at first with nobody out in the ninth inning. Young and Flaherty jumping to their feet after the base hit by Boggs. Jody Reed is the hitter in a bunt situation. That is the ninth hit for the Red Sox, the first surrendered by Lilliquist. Reed today, one for four, single to left in the fifth. Throw to second for Nancy back safely. Cleveland two, Boston one, top of the ninth. 
first and second and nobody out. Read of the plate. Mike Greenwell is in the on-deck circle. Lilliquist to the plate. Reed takes a ball, throw to second. Vernansky back safely. The Cleveland bullpen definitely considered a weakness of this club. They don't have anybody who has served in the past as an established closer. Steve Olin has been throwing in the bullpen. He's just watching at the moment. Reed not showing any sign of a bunt that time. And it's 2-0. Greenwell waiting in the on-deck circle. Jody takes all the way, and it's a strike two and one. A little bit surprised by the lack of a squaring on the previous pitch. With a chance to get the go-ahead run to second, and the tying run to third with one out. And with the meat of the order behind Reed, Greenwell, the number three hitter, then Burks. In the air to left, and pretty well hit. Bell drifting back to make the catch. Bernanski did not tag, and as a result, he's still at second. He went halfway. Reed hit it well, but Bell tracked it down in front of the warning track. Butch Hobson deciding to forego the sacrifice to get the go-ahead run down to second. Now it's first and second and one out. Brunanski went halfway, realized Bell was going to catch it, ran back to the second base bag, tried to tag, but by then it was too late. And in this situation, might not have taken the chance on going to third, but the ball hit the left anyway. Mike Greenwell. This will be a most opportune time for his first RBI of the year. He's 0 for 3 with a walk today. He fouls one straight back and out of play. 2-1 Indians, top of the ninth. Runners at first and second with one out. Mike Hargrove's bullpen quiet at the moment. Greenwell swung at a bad pitch and missed, going two. Slowly towards second. They tag Boggs. Double play. The game's over. There will be no hitter. No no hitter here in Cleveland today. The Indians win it despite the fact that they did not have a hit in eight innings against Matt Young. Under the new rules and scoring criteria for Major League Baseball, this does not qualify as a no-hitter. It would have up until this season. A very tough loss for the Red Sox, in particular Matt Young. Two Indians runs scored by batters who walk. Young walked seven and all. Struck out five. 
Final score in game one of the doubleheader. Cleveland 2, Boston 1. We'll have much more in just a moment. Why is it so busy at McDonald's? It's such a good deal right now. We have uh, 59 cent hamburgers, 69 cent cheeseburgers. Price is low, it tastes great. You can't beat it. You name it, we got it. People love us. Check out the prices. How much is a cheeseburger this week at McDonald's? 69 cents. And next week? 69 cents. How much does a 59 cent hamburger cost? 59 cents. Are you sure? Yeah, you just said it. Come on down and see us. Prices are great and the food's great. You can't beat that. Is there more pressure being in a commercial or working at McDonald's? Being in a commercial. <laughs> You know, there's real magic in Diet Pepsi. It's got that special aha ingredient. You got the right one, baby. Hey. Okay, girls. Now, what's that magic ingredient? With 100% uh-huh. Hi, Bob Cousy here for your New England Lincoln Mercury Deal. You know, there is a lot of great tradition here at the Garden, and that's what you'll find in the new 92 Mercury Grand Marquis, America's two full-size sedan. A powerful V8, available ABS brakes, dual airbags, and more. No wonder it's New England's number one selling full-size car. If you ask me, some traditions only get better. See your New England Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Most guys kick back on the weekends. Jack, on the other hand, To bunt or not to bunt, that is the question. Whether it is nobler to lay one down the line or to swing for the fences. To play, a chance to win, and by a win to say we end this dreadful streak. A hit. A hit my kingdom for. A hit. If it's out there, it's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? The totals for this afternoon's game. And they are strange looking totals on your screen without question. For the Indians, two runs, no hits, no errors. They left, <clears throat> pardon me, a total of six runners on base. The Red Sox, one run, eight hits, and one error. They stranded 10. They also bounced in double plays in each of the last two innings. The winning pitcher, Cleveland starter Charles Nagy, he levels his record at one and one. The tough luck loser, Matt Young, who did not allow a hit in eight innings. He loses his first start of the year. He walked seven, struck out six, and a save for Derek Lilliquist, his first as a member of the Cleveland Indians. Time of the ball game, two hours and 37 minutes, and we'll have more in just a moment. to more cities across the Atlantic than any other U.S. airline, Delta now makes it easier than ever for the people of America to get to know the people of Europe. Buongiorno. Bonjour. See ya. Good dark. Ritzy. Delta. We love to fly in shows. Nonsense. That's what some car makers offer when they compare themselves to the all-new Toyota Camry. They don't tell you that their cars are smaller, with no standard airbag, not even a real spare tire. Cheaper, sure. A better value? Nonsense. This Toyota Camry seats five comfortably, quietly, and has a history of better resale value. Cheaper, they got it. A better value? Nonsense. When the Beck brothers decided to start their international consulting business, they carefully planned everything. Including how to save money. 
with AT&T International Business Alternative, a new savings plan designed for even the smallest companies. We got the Yusaki account. The only thing they didn't plan was growing overnight. Fortunately, AT&T offers ProWatts International, a savings plan that keeps pace with their business. Plus, AT&T International Facts, International 800 Service, and International Video Conferencing. Helpful and innovative services that quickly adjusted to their growing needs, even before they could. We got the Martinez account. <laughs> Who owns that building next door? A world of help from AT&T. Call now and find out how much your growing business can save internationally with AT&T. We respected what Phil was doing, but we weren't going to let him know that. Look, if you want to work out, lift weights. Like a normal person, huh? Ride a bicycle. Or swim. Yeah, or go bowling or do something. <laughs> something safe. Just be there, all right? <laughs> as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. That was cool. Yeah, that was great. That was crazy. <laughs> Red Sox hadn't hit any home runs in game one of this afternoon's doubleheader, but there's always the second game coming up against the Cleveland Indians. Every time a Red Sox player hits a home run during a TV 38 televised game, you can win two tickets to a Red Sox home game in a case of two little bottles of Diet Pepsi. The right one, baby. Uh-huh. You'll also be eligible for the grand prize drawing at the end of the season. To enter, just send your name and address on a postcard to TV 38 Pepsi Home Run Sweepstakes, Post Office Box 500, Boston, Massachusetts, 02135. The Budweiser player of game one is Boston left-handed starter Matt Young for his efforts this afternoon, allowing the Cleveland Indians no hits through the eight innings of his work. Seven base on balls, two of those wound up scoring the only two runs that the Indians would get in that ball game. Eight hitless innings for Matt Young, but yet he winds up the loss. He's still our Budweiser player of the game. Budweiser salutes Matt Young, and remember, nothing beats a bud. The Red Sox did not complete any double plays in game one, but there's always game two of today's doubleheader against the Indians. Every time the Red Sox complete a double play, you have a chance to win a pair of Red Sox tickets. Compliments of Thompson's wood protector. To be eligible, send a postcard to Thompson's double play, box 3800, Boston 02135. Well, an interesting start to this season for the Red Sox and for the Indians, for that matter, for sure. And uh, it's tough to have uh, uh, much more of a heart-wrenching situation than you had for Matt Young here today. Uh, up until this season, that would have been a no-hitter. You remember the example that Jim Sammy has cited when he was on with us, Andy Hawkins of a year ago. Now the rain-delayed no-hitters, no longer considered no-hitters. It's a rule that in, in many ways makes sense, uh, but it's no consolation. To no Matt consolation, Young and, the Red Sox. and it's still a one-run loss. Now, mm -hmm. three of the Reds, well, all their losses uh, so far have been by the one-run route. It's an awfully tough way to go for them so far. A couple of... Uh, one run losses in New York the one here this afternoon uh, I have to like and I know every you have to like the confidence in the work that I saw from Matt Young in this ball game today disregarding the fact that he still walked seven people that's something he is going to be working more toward we saw him throw the first more we saw him stay in a ball game right on through the thing and Butch Hobson really really needed this from Matt Young today he certainly would look to have had the win but the, the thing is there, the confidence looks like it's there for Matt Young. It continues to increase. That can be a very, very strong and important part of Butch Hobson's pitching staff. Mm -hmm. And in game two, we will see Roger Clemens on the mound for the Red Sox against Scott Scudder. Another encouraging thing, Matt Young's ability to throw to bases, pick the runner off today, officially in the books as a caught stealing. But Dave Moorhead, at least for the moment, is still safe. His place uh, in the most recent Red Sox history books Secure is the last pitcher to throw a no-hitter for the Red Sox back in 1965 against the same Cleveland Indians in a ball game in September of that year at Fenway Park. Uh, one other subject that is interesting and deserves mention, certainly, the decision by Butch Hobson in the ninth inning with the tying run at first, first and second, and nobody out, trailing by a run, no bunt from Jody Reed. Well, I, he took a shot there. He didn't get the bunt from Boggs because of his ability maybe to get the ball put into play there. He took a shot. It almost paid off for him big time with the, mm -hmm. with the three-run homer. 
I, I was, where I was sitting down at the field level at that time, I could not see exactly how deep the ball was hit in the left field, but it was something you, I'm sure he'll get some questions about why there was no bunt to move, not only the uh, tying run into third, but you move the go-ahead run mm -hmm. down to second base. And that was one thing that they've really talked about all spring long as being a fundamentally sound ball club. And that would have been a time there where one of those fundamentals that would have jumped up in the sacrifice bunt very well could have been in order. Final score once again of today's game one, Cleveland two and Boston one. This is the TV 38 Red Sox Network. Today's game has been brought to you in part by Diet Pepsi, the right one, baby. And by Thompson's Water Seal, the number one name in waterproofing and the brand to trust. Stay tuned for game two of today's doubleheader. But before that, Monty had a chance to speak with Butch Hobson and Phil Plantier, and we'll have those interviews and much more as Red Sox baseball continues. Cheers. Sam's sex life gets the third degree from Dr. Diane. This will be frank and candid. We may be touching on some highly sensitive areas. Ooh, well, I like the sound of it already. <laughs> yeah, Sammy the stud is getting ready. Sam. No, not now. I'm uh, going to prepare us for my lecture here. You know, it's about time I gave something back to the sport that's given me so much. It's Sexual Encounters 101 on Cheers. Monday, okay. 7 on TV 38. <laughs> We've got the goods in Florida. Six pack of ice. Garden party. Rocket man. Fire one. Struck him out. Four in the floor. Sports beat. Wrong. End of story. Fill it to the rim. So good. They're bad. Bad to the bone. We've got the goods. The sporting goods. Only on TV 38. Staying with us for the in-between games of the doubleheader here in Cleveland this afternoon, we have an opportunity to congratulate new Boston Red Sox manager Butch Hobson on his first victory as a major league manager. And it was a long time coming, Butch. And I mean, not so deep into the season, but 19 innings is a long time. Well, that was a long day. <laughs> it was, you know, uh, it's like I told the guys, it was it was our, our first win for 1992. And uh, uh, I, I just really appreciate the... Um, the intensity and the and the atmosphere that was in the dugout, even in the 15th inning, uh, even though it's early in the year, when you play a game like that. And